Hey guys, Gavin Timms with REI Network, another episode before I get back on the road uh, to Savannah, Georgia. We're going to be leaving uh, Tucson, Arizona, making our way back um, through some awesome states, doing some good stops along the way. Uh, we're probably going to do this drive, you know, over the next um, four, probably four or five days. Uh, take it pretty easy, uh, getting back into Savannah and then obviously getting ready uh, for the following week for Thanksgiving. Um, it's been quite the time. Um, we've had some ups and downs on this trip. We've been away at this point about six weeks, I think. By the time we get home, it's going to be about a seven-week trip. And, um, you know, that's kind of what led me to do this episode today. Um, but just before I, uh, I jump in, I do want to say I am using a new app and I want you all to check it out and let me know what you think. Okay, batchdriven.com slash Gavin, batchdriven.com slash Gavin. You can do virtual driving for dollars. You can pull lists from it. You can pinpoint vacants. Uh, the virtual driving for dollars, you literally drop in Google, select any house, skip trace it on the spot. With my link, you're going to get at least 50 skip traces free to test it out. Um, and if nothing else, try it. Let me know what you think. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm also going to put a link in in this video or on the podcast to a, a to a batch driven video that I did that you can kind of see how it works as well. All right, so make sure you click on that and uh, and kind of test it out. So anyway, let's get on with today's episode. Um, and I think it's it's super important. Um, that I've found over the last few weeks, you know, that we've had some highs and lows. Uh, unfortunately, we had a death in the family. Um, and it made me realize that, you know, traveling is is, is great. Um, and it's, you know, you, you look at it of the, the positive side. But things when, you know, life happens and things don't go well, you also see that, you know, the lifestyle business, you know, the way to set up business to work from anywhere um, is really important as well on the, on, the, on the sadder times, you know, when there is a death in the family, we, you know, we could stay here two more weeks that wasn't planned, um, you know, and be here <clears throat> for the family. So, you know, we got to do that. We had some special moments um, and it was another thing to say, you know what, that, that if you set this business up, in the, in the right way, um, you know, you can do from people getting sick to, to the happy times as well, all right? So what I want to talk to you about today is, is literally, I want you to all think about, like, what are you trying to do? Like, what is it that you want your life to look like and your business? Because there's so many ways that you can set this business up, and it has to be delivering, okay, for for you, all right. So what is it that you want? What's your outcome? And and, and everything's going to be different from spending time with the family, you know, um, traveling. Um, there's a hundred things of what's your why, right? So finding out what your why is and sticking to it, because when we get in the trenches and this gets difficult, which it will, um, we need to go back to that why. But I think people come in and say, I'm just going to follow suit. And, and, and that's great. You can follow suit, but you have to follow suit in, in the way that you want it to be done, right? You can't go and follow suit with someone that's building, you know, a, a big office with a lot of staff if that's not what you want, right? You can't follow suit if you're trying to, um, if, if it's not in alignment with what you're trying to do. So make sure that you really think about this. And once you have that, it's much easier then to make decisions in business, okay, to, to, to find out which direction that you need to go in. I just had uh, someone on my team, Gabe, we're just having a conversation last night, you know, about this, about, you know, me, me coaching and teaching and, and the way that, you know, what do I think? What do I tell people? And, and I decided to sit back and, and kind of analyze myself through this discussion. I said, well, actually, I, I teach depending on what the person needs, okay? And what their, what's their goals? Um, what, what are they trying to do? And the plan then builds around that. And, and it's very difficult because he said, oh, well, you're going to do a course. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I do want to do, you know, a course, you know, on the virtual side. But I want it, I don't want it to just be a one, one stop thing in terms of, you know, finding a partner on the ground. That is one of my strategies. But that's not going to suit everyone. Because people are going to be doing it in their local market. People do want to be involved. They do enjoy being on the phone. They do enjoy driving around seeing properties. So you can't take that away from them and build something that's, again, not in your vision. Okay. So 
I think it's really important, you know, to, to understand that. So I'm going to throw a few scenarios out at you um, where, you know, the things that you need to be thinking about, right? The first thing is, like, number one is design, a, a, you know, your ideal picture of your life, okay? Um, and then start with that. So find out what the why is. What are we trying to do? Okay, that's that's the first thing. The next thing when we talk about real estate investing is what's your exit strategy? In an ideal world, what is it that you want? Um, because it does matter in terms of when we create the plan, if then what's the mark type of marketing are we going to do? What lists are we going to pull? Okay, um, depending on what your outcome is. So for instance, some people want to fix and flip. Some people want to wholesale cash. Some people want to buy and hold. Some people want to control property without owning it. Okay, um, people want to do owner finance and hold deals, and all these things is <clears throat> good. Now that doesn't mean that we're not going to do any of the other strategies because we are, but at least we're going after what you want, what you what you're trying to create. Because if you're trying to do a buy and hold, okay, and you want buy and holds, then I'm not going to you know on a virtual level, I'm not going to send you to California, okay, to San Fran. I'm not going to send you to. Um, New York to go and do buy and holds because that's not where the buy and holds are, right? So you, you, I see it all the time. Oh, well, I'm in the New York market and, and I'm trying to pick rentals up. It doesn't make any sense because the numbers don't make sense to me, at least. Okay, people will argue and say, "Well, I have rentals there and and I do Air, Airbnbs." I'm not saying it can't be done, but if you're picking a, a, a random market virtually. You know, it needs to be something that makes a little more sense, okay? Uh, we talk about the 1% rule, right? There's a quick analyzing, there's a virtual market. 1% meaning, um, and, and some investors will want better than this, but it's just a quick uh, a quick market analogy. So 100,000 brings in $1,000 in rent, okay? So again, you're not gonna go and buy a $400,000 house that rents for 2,000 a month. Your goal is to buy something that, Ideally, for seven hundred thousand, sorry, for seventy thousand, that rents for a thousand would be good numbers. Does that make sense? So, you know, playing with them roadshows in a, in a market like that for a buy and hold. Now, you fix and flip. You know, we just did one in Maui, a fix and flip. So that can be done. Um, you can do them in San Fran. You can do them in Cal, uh, anywhere in Cal. You can do them in New York. All right. Um, because it's a different type of deal. But understanding this, even from lease options and controlling properties, is that the marketing that we go for, okay, determines kind of our first strategy. That's the way that I prefer to teach it. So if I have someone that wants fix and flip, well, what are we going to do? We're going to go and get lists, okay, and, and there's multiple marketing uh, strategies that we can use, but the first thing is the list, right? What list can we use? We're going to be using lists with equity in it, with that might be vacant, uh, that might be in pre-foreclosure, um, they could be inheritance, they could be divorce, you know, deals uh, or, or lists like this are going to help making sure we have equity in them where there, there might be some uh, you know tax delinquent code violation with some motivation there then you can get into list stacking you know very big on that is stacking my list and seeing okay making sure I'm not paying for the same data which is because remember data is expensive um, not paying for the same data and also um, when we stack lists we want to see that okay if Gavin Timms at 123 Main Street comes up on a tax delinquent a code violation an absentee and a divorce list then I'm probably pretty motivated so you need to be calling me texting me sending me direct mail door knocking me everything that you can do because it probably shows um, that I have a lot of motivation and the cool thing is is when you go in to speak to this person you don't need to say hey I found your on all these lists no you just engage find out what's going on you want to buy the property and then as you build rapport all that will unfold okay so you kind of know the upper end it's just like pre-foreclosures i don't go in and tell them they're in pre-foreclosure because they're going to get defensive okay normally if you can help them out they're going to open up and want to work with you all right so a few things there of understanding you know the market uh, side of where you're going to go based on the strategy. Then we can talk about, you know, the list as we just did, you know, more of a lease option, especially on an assignment. You don't need as much equity or no equity to make that work, right? So I'm not going to go and pull an equity list 
to do that. If I want sandwich lease option, I might pull a vacant list because I can move tenants in straight away if I can get some equity. I can still do an assignment on them because there's no tenants in the way. So I have to understand this as part of the plan because then it's going to give me the best chance, okay, of actually doing deals. The other thing is, um, as well, back to analyzing yourself, is what time? How much money have you got to invest? How much time do you have to invest, right? Because these are the things that I ask clients to determine which direction that we're going to head into. So, for instance, if I get a guy that's working 70 hours a week, right, and he's like, I've got money, I work 70 hours a week, I don't have time, I want to get these systems in place so I can make money, he's like, okay, cool, I understand what you're trying to do, but who's going to farm them calls? Who's taking them calls? Who's running appointments or locking deals up over the phone? Who's moving them to the buyers? Because your 70 hours, if you can't reduce that, you're going to struggle. So that's where I might say, okay, we're going to find a partner on the ground, okay? So the local could be a wholesaler that already has a buyers list that we can partner with. We're going to go and find that person. Then we'll put the system together. We'll have the lead flow coming in. We can build that so the person on the ground's got leads. You can be then splitting 50, 50, 64 in your favor okay and get deals done that way because then that 50 percent again one of my models all adds up for you then to reach your goal to get out of your job and do that because if you're working 70 hours a week and you're going in as a brand new wholesaler doing your own marketing but you don't have time to work the business it isn't going to work all it becomes is a money pit so you have to put the right systems in place to be able to get the result Okay, then we have the other side. Maybe you have, you're like, hey, I've been, you know, I don't have a job right now. I don't have any money, but I've got a ton of time on my hands. Then your plan is going to be different. So if you've got loads of time, you need to be pounding the phone, making offers and following up. You need to be networking with other people doing marketing and working their old leads, working their dead leads, working their follow up, doing anything that you can to get money coming in. Remember, as soon as money comes in, you can then transition to meet your goal even though your goal is so far out right now and you can't even see you know through the fog because you don't have a job and any money and how can you even possibly invest in real estate okay that's just short term we just need money so we can transition and I did that that was my start I used dead leads 60 dead leads called got hold of about 40 people closed my first two deals from dead leads working with another wholesaler which then bought money in which then opened the door of opportunity okay which then the 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 person i was working with paid for more marketing i then did the same thing with two other people then i started to build my own systems out okay and then and kind of here we are today from opportunity from opportunity from doors opening from creating doors opening nothing's going to happen for you but guess what the vision for me from day one when i started in phoenix well actually i started when i was in san francisco in a virtual market in jacksonville florida big error why time difference getting off work at six o'clock it was nine o'clock at night i'd sent direct mail out and i'd call in the day it was nine o'clock trying to call people it was difficult when we moved to phoenix straight pretty much within a couple probably a month i started then to work the phoenix market where i was actually located and that's kind of how i um you know started networking started to work you know them deals got them closed and then transitioned all right um but the vision was in phoenix guys is that i'm from england okay we travel my wife's a travel nurse I don't know how long I'm going to be in Phoenix, 13 weeks, and then I'm moving again. This business had to be set up where it did not involve me going to the property, and that's what I stuck with. I've done deals where they've been within a few miles of the house that I was living in, and I would not go to them because you have to stay disciplined because if I go once, I go twice, I go three times. All of a sudden, now it's my job. So you have to put the things in place like I don't, I'm not here. Okay, I'm acting like I'm not here and I'm going to put the things in place so it works without me. And if you're going to do it truly on a virtual level, that's what you need to do. So sometimes, yeah, local, a local market is better because you can network and you can have more pull, but go to a virtual market. Okay, Um, and then you can't do any of them things. So it forces you to stay disciplined to make this happen. All right. So you need to just get that. Like I said, that flow down of, of what are you trying to do? Understand your plan. And this is exactly Again, what I do with one-to-one clients, right? We, we, we get on Zoom, we engage, and, and they come in thinking they have the plan. And then when we talk about what their needs and what their wants are, what their goals are, 
the plan may change because it doesn't make sense. The reason it changes is my goal is to go, yeah, you're, yeah, what you're saying and what you want to do makes sense. Or it could be what you're saying and what you're doing doesn't make sense because you're saying that you don't want to buy and hold, but you're looking to do a sandwich lease option and stay in the middle of the deal or whatever it may be, right? So we might have to revisit that. Um, if they want to stay in the deal, get out, fix and flip, you know, uh, we, we, we find when you pick your best deals, cherry pick them to flip, to hold. There's so many things that you can do, but having that plan is just going to help you execute. All right. So anyway, um, if you want to get any help, you know, from me, go to reinetwork.com slash coaching, check it out, fill out the form, me or the team will get on, have a chat and see if we're a good fit. If not, no problem. One thing I do want you to do, give me a like and subscribe on the channel, whether it's YouTube or uh, the podcast, that'd be awesome. I appreciate you guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode. Hopefully you got a lot from it. Um, again, I'm about to uh, pack the RV, bring the slides in. It's pretty early here and uh, we're going to be heading to Savannah. So uh, the next time that you speak or hear from me, um, I should be back in my office in Savannah. Um, I'll give you an update how the trip went. And I uh, just wanted to say, you know, I appreciate you all. Have a great November and um, you let me know if you need anything at all. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye bye.